on paper, the BTEC UV Pro and the Kenwood D75 look similar, but there's some key differences. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. I see a lot of comparisons online between the BTEC UV Pro and the variants of this radio. There's one by VGC and another by Radiotity. They're practically all the same radio, with the exception the BTEC version has the U.S. Weather Channels built into it. Other than that, they are very, very similar radios. But I see a lot of comparisons between the BTEC and the Kenwood D75. Now, right up front, the BTEC is only about 160 bucks at the time of this recording. The Kenwood D75 is coming in, I believe, at about 640 bucks. So there's a huge price difference between these radios. But what do you really get for that additional almost 500 bucks? Well, let's talk about it. First of all, these both have Bluetooth TNCs built into it that we can access either with a computer or with a cellular device. Uh, running something like APRS Droid or Packet Winlink. They both have USB-C charging, and they both have built-in APRS. Well, kind of, and that's one of the key differences. Both of these radios have USB-C charging. Uh, the Kenwood has it on the side. The BTEC has it on the back, right down here uh, on the bottom of the battery. Now, one advantage of the USB-C being on the battery is I can pull the battery off and plug it up to charge without it being on the radio. In the case of the Kenwood, the battery has got to be attached to the radio in order to charge it with USB-C. One advantage the Kenwood has though here is it also has a 12 volt DC in uh, right on the side of the radio. So two different ways to charge it right on the side of the radio. Plus you've got the addition of the cradle uh, if you choose to pick that up in addition to the radio from Kenwood. I typically prefer to run this thing off of the 12 volt barrel connector just so I don't have to do any adapting from my normal 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, one other key difference between these radios, the BTEC is waterproof. This one is not. So if you're going to be out in inclement weather, the BTEC kind of has an advantage in that regard. You don't have to worry about this one getting wet or even being submerged in water. So that is definitely a positive in, uh, in favor of the UV Pro. Another positive in favor of the UV Pro is battery life. When I'm beaconing APRS, uh, every five minutes or so, not really talking on the radio, but just beaconing that APRS every five minutes, I can get around 12 hours or maybe just a little bit over 12 hours with the UV Pro. The Kenwood, well, it's not even close. If I turn on beaconing with the Kenwood and I'm running the GPS, I'm only going to get about 7 hours, maybe a little bit longer, but not by much out of the Kenwood. And I really think that Kenwood should go and steal the engineer that designed this radio to get that much life out of the battery. Yeah, the battery is a little bit larger, but not so much so that it should give you an additional five hours of runtime out of this radio. So I don't know what uh, BTEC is doing to get that much battery life out of it, but I've got to give it up for this radio. The UV Pro has incredible battery life. But, and this is the big but, let's talk about APRS. APRS in the BTEC is only about 80% there. And I'll, I'll explain some of those differences and why I say it's only 80% there at best here in just a second. On the Kenwood, APRS functions exactly like it's supposed to. It follows all of the APRS guidelines and does everything by the book. I can't say the same thing about the BTEC radio. Now, before we get into those key differences, I do want to mention that this radio, the BTEC, does have an app that will run on your phone. Some of the things that it lacks in the radio itself, you can make up for with the application running on the phone. 
I'm just not a fan of doing it that way. The app is a little bit janky, and then again, I don't want to have to have the app connected to my radio in order to get all of the features out of it. I'd rather all of the features be baked in and let me control them right from the front panel of the radio. I get that with a Kenwood. I don't get that with the BTEC. Now, let's talk about uh, why I say it's only 80% there in the case of APRS. And I'm going to start with APRS messages. This radio does not handle APRS messages correctly. First off, uh, it doesn't handle the decay algorithm like it's supposed to. So if you send a message, it's supposed to use something called the decay algorithm, meaning it will send out that message immediately. Then it's going to wait about 30 seconds, or it's supposed to, and it should send that message again. Then it's going to double the amount of time that it waits. So instead of 30 seconds, it should wait about 60 seconds before it retries that message. And before the next attempt, it should double that time again. And you should wind up with somewhere around four or five tries before it gives up on the message. This radio won't do that. And I don't care if it's connected uh, to the phone or if you're just trying to run it from the front of the radio, it just doesn't work that way. And I just don't think the people developing the firmware for BTEC understand exactly the way APRS is supposed to work. Now, this might not seem like a big deal to begin with, but it's a bigger deal than you think if you use uh, APRS messages on a regular basis. The other thing that this doesn't do is it doesn't uh, accept message acknowledgements. It'll accept them, but it doesn't do anything with them. It basically ignores them. So what I mean by that is if I send a message from the BTEC radio and it's received after the first packet goes out, this radio just ignores that it got an acknowledgement and it continues to try to send that message again and again and again. Now, I mentioned that decay algorithm. This one just sends the message four or five times every 60 seconds. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't use that decay algorithm at all. Now, contrast that with the Kenwood radio. If I send a message from this radio and it receives an acknowledgement, the radio understands that acknowledgement and it no longer tries to retransmit that message. So that is a huge difference between these two radios. Another thing while we're talking about messages uh, and the difference between the BTEC and the Kenwood. On the Kenwood, I get two separate lists. One list is my station list. So that's all of the other APRS stations that I've heard, whether those are HTs, mobile stations, weather, whatever it happens to be. All of my stations and objects are contained in one list on the Kenwood. In a separate list is all of my APRS messages. So it's quick and easy to take a look at whichever list you need to to try to find something. Now, the way the BTEC handles that, well, it's all thrown into one list. So there's no clear identifier on the radio when you've got a new message and when it's just a station that you've heard. They're all just intermingled together and it makes it a lot more difficult to find something on this radio that might have come in. Another downside to the BTEC radio comes if you turn the radio off. If you turn this radio off, you're going to lose all of your stations that you've heard and all of the messages that you've received. Now, if you're using an app on the phone, either their app or something like APRS Droid, those messages will be retained in the app but they're not retained on the radio itself. I don't know if the phone lacks enough memory to be able to handle that or exactly why they chose to go that route. But just know if you turn the radio off, you're going to lose any messages that you may have received. Now, with all of that said, I'm still a fan of the BTEC radio. Do I use it all the time? No. Often, I carry the Kenwood instead, but it all depends on what I'm going to do and how I'm going to operate. 
if I carry the BTEC radio, I absolutely do not use APRS on this radio. It's just not close enough, in my opinion, to call this a real APRS radio. Now, sure, we can use it with the phone and get a lot of the functions back that we lose with the radio itself. And if I'm carrying this radio, that's exactly what I'm going to do. However, I don't use their application. I just find their application janky. If you're going to use the BTEC, I would recommend that you use an application on your phone like APRS Droid. If you're on Android or if you're on iOS, take a look at Pocket Packet or APRS.fi. My favorite between those two is Pocket Packet. If you pair this radio with APRS Droid or Pocket Packet, this actually becomes a pretty usable radio, in my opinion, even for APRS. However, if you don't want to fuss with the radio and keeping those, or with the phone and keeping those two connected, then definitely the Kenwood D75 is the clear winner here. I can do every single thing, including making this radio a digipeter, right from the front panel of the radio. I don't have to connect it to my phone in order to make any of that work. If I want to connect it to the phone, well, it just makes it a little easier when I'm sending or replying to messages. So, uh, you will often see me using the D75 and connecting it to my phone, but that just makes sending messages a whole lot faster and easier because both of these radios and any uh, HT radio is cumbersome at best to send an APRS message. That goes for all of them, Kenwood, BTEC, and Yezu. While we're talking about Yezu, uh, they're the ones that I really feel is going to get left out in this race for APRS. Yezu does not have a Bluetooth TNC built into it, and that's why you don't see it in this lineup. Now, I have a Yezu FT5, and I do like that HT, but I seldom carry it now that I have the Kenwood and the BTEC. If I'm going to be playing with APRS today, it's probably going to be one of these two radios. I would love to see Yezu put a Bluetooth TNC in their next HT. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.